Hi YouTube, welcome to part one of my Daz 3D Centaur 2 Blender series. In this part, I'm going to show you how to prepare the mesh of the Centaur so that we can export it to Blender um, in a nice clean way without all of the duplicated mesh pieces that come with the Centaur model. Part two will be how to export and then we will go from there. First things first, I'll navigate to the Genesis 8 um, female centaur, click on that, and it brings down the uh, products list for that item. So I'll drag the female centaur actor into the scene. And when you drag it in, this is what it'll look like to begin with. So um, assuming you're already somewhat familiar with Daz, you'll know that you can come and modify uh, the character as, as you would with any other character in Daz, just with some of these sliders. So um, we're not going to get into that too much. The one thing I will note is doing it this way will prevent a lot of the problems that come from uh, trying to deal with it later. So one thing, one thing I always do, I think the human part of this is too small. So I come in and bring this up just a little bit, so something like 60%. So now it looks fine in here, but exporting it to Blender can be tricky and I'll show you why. So this is what, this is what the character looks like just in Daz, but uh, there's extra mesh because the program actually includes uh, the the bottom part of the human still, and then it makes a duplicate of the upper body of the human. So we have extra mesh that just causes problems later. So the first thing we need to do to clean the mesh is uh, come up here to tools at the top and go to the Geometry Editor. So once I click that, now you can see that we have these kind of weird um, extra meshes going on. Well, this the smaller unscaled human part of this mesh is actually uh, the original Genesis 8 female human upper body and then obviously the legs. So what you're seeing is um, the, the upper body here got scaled more because I, I modified the slider, but the original, the copy of the mesh did not. So we need to remove that, uh, the copied upper body and, and legs. So the first thing is with your Genesis 8 female um, over here in the uh, scene selection menu, you wanna highlight the Genesis 8 female. And then once you've done that, you can right click so you can see the box around the character. There's That means it's selected in the viewport. Right click, go to geometry selection, select by, and then if we go to, I believe, um, follower auto hidden faces, there's this, um, there's only one option. It's the female centaur body. You get this, uh, the legs are selected only the human legs. So the original human legs are now selected and we don't want those because when you export to Blender, this is what it'll look like. So it'll have all this duplicate mesh. We don't need that. There's no reason to have it. So once you've selected that, so again, go to geometry selection, select by follower auto hidden faces, and then click female centaur body and it selects the legs and then right click again, go to geometry editing, and then delete selected polygons. It'll say, are you sure you want to do it? Blah, blah, blah. Say yes. Takes a few seconds. Okay, now it's deleted the geometry. Uh, it doesn't probably look like it on your screen, but what you're seeing is just some, um, I don't know what Daz calls them, but they're basically like the weights that the bones use. So, um, I guess it's attached to the centaur shell, which we'll talk about in a second. But when you export this, those will go away. So that's no longer a problem. So the, the mesh itself is fixed. 
So the legs are gone at this point. Uh, it's a little hard to see, but they're kind of transparent. So that's how you know it worked. So at this point now we just have the duplicate human upper body part. So now what we need to do for that, and you have to do these in this order. So you have to do the duplicate human legs first by selecting the, the Genesis 8 female body like we did. And then you have to come down here and select the female centaur body. And now right click in the viewport again, go to geometry selection, select by, and then there's an option called rigidity group participants. And then it only has one option, which is centaur. So click that. And now you can see that the like horse body is selected. Uh, obviously we want to keep that. We don't want to delete it. So now we need to invert the selection. So right click on the viewport again, go to geometry selection, and then invert selection. And now it's a little hard to see, but um, you can tell that the extra human upper body is selected now. So right click one more time geometry editing, and then delete selected polygons. Again, it'll say, are you sure you want to do this? Hit yes. And by the way, before I do this, DAS tends to crash on deleting these, um, this many polygons, it seems like. So save all the time. Otherwise, you'll have to do this again. Uh, if it crashes right now, I apologize. But I'll just cut it and we'll get right back to it. So say yes. Okay, so it deleted our... Um, excessive polygons. So now we're, we're going to be ready to export the mesh to Blender here soon. Uh, the other thing you can do if you want to is add hair and clothing and all that stuff and props and in Daz if you want. But just keep in mind that uh, especially like clothing, the physics aren't necessarily going to come across. You're going to have to fix all that in Blender and stuff like hair isn't going to necessarily be as uh, smooth as this process. So just be aware, you may have to redo some of it or modify it in Blender anyway. Um, but we'll play around with that a little bit for now. So we're still in Geometry Editor, and you can see there's a seam at like her waist. Well, that'll go away once we go back to the viewport. So let's just um, go back to the Node Selection tool. You can either just click on this arrow that I have up here on the top, or I believe you can go to tools and go to node selector, same thing. So now you can see that the, the mesh looks nice and clean. There's not that weird seam we saw at the um, interface between the human and horse parts and everything looks like it's more or less good to go. So the the biggest note here, so you can add, add your clothes uh, clothing are not going to be as hard to deal with. So at this point you can add clothes. That's, that's just fine. Um, you can pose it, but I wouldn't. And I'll tell you why. Uh, if you pose it now, like right now it's in the perfect pose for rigging in Blender. If you, if you pose it with some sort of a custom, especially non symmetrical pose, it's going to be really hard to rig it in Blender. So there's no reason to do that. Um, when I export, I use Diffeomorphic add-on, which I'll show you how that works probably in the second part of this series. But um, when I export it, it'll come across with bones, but I've never got those to be smooth with the centaur because kind of the same thing with the meshes, it duplicates the bones that um, the, the DAS model has. And that creates problems for us because we have to go and delete them in Blender and if you have a just a normal model, a normal human, Diffeomorphic does fine with making a um, Rigify rig for Blender, and you can convert that in Blender later. So, but with these extra extra pieces that the Centaur model and some of these other like multiple combined parts models, like this and the Mermaid would be the the next example that comes to mind. Um, some of these models have all those extra duplicated bits and you can't, it's not going to be a smooth process in Blender. So you're almost going to have to re-rig it. I'm still looking into if there's a way to kind of clean it up in here first with bones, but I already have a Centaur uh, bone system for Rigify. So I just use that. And if you guys want, let me know in the comments. I, I can share that if you guys want it. But uh, for now, we're just going to worry about getting the mesh into Blender with the attachments we want. So, 
Um, we can we can throw clothes on at this point. We can throw on hair. I normally like to at least throw on the hair just to see what it looks like. And then when I get to Blender, I'll decide whether or not I'm going to use the Daz hair. But um, again, assuming you're a little bit familiar with Daz, you can just you can just drag the hair onto the head and it should pop up. And if it looks weird for a second, it might take a little bit to load. There you go. Otherwise, just make sure it's parented to uh, the head of the model. And then I can select the hair in the uh, scene panel over here. And then I'm going to apply a shape, which just made it a lot longer. Okay, so now when we export this, the hair will still be a separate object. And it'll actually have its own bones that um, aren't really ready for rigify, but they're they're still poseable and they're still useful. So you'll be able to modify the mesh and deal with it in Blender without without having to worry about the hair being in the way. So while you may or may not be able to use it in Blender, you can at least put it on and see what it looks like. That won't cause any problems. But so now we have a pretty pretty good looking model. Um, the only other things you you might want to do. Obviously, you're you're gonna want to customize your character, so um, you'll probably switch out some some hides and stuff like that. Like there's different horse colors here for the model. Uh, doesn't really matter for this topic too much, but um, if you want to put those on, you have to select the centaur shell, I believe, and drag the materials on. Um, maybe it is the body. Let's see here. We have to make sure we select the appropriate component. But we can apply, um, we can apply different materials to the model. You know, do whatever else you normally would do in in Daz. There we go. Yeah. So I don't know why the other ones weren't loading, but um, I had to apply these materials, these hides to the um, centaur shell. So now um, you can change the like. The breed of the horse part of her, if you want to have a different one, should be able to just drag them on. So now the last note before we're ready to get a um, the basic centaur into Blender. So as you can see, there's this weird original white strip here at the transition of the two pieces of the body. Uh, those are part of the shell. So if I turn the shell on and off in the viewport, you can see that that goes away, which is all fine and good, but uh, it leaves a, a really rigid line where the texture stops from the human part and starts on the horse part. And this obviously is not ideal. And hopefully somebody knows, you know, in the comments, please let us all know because I'm sure this is a fairly common issue for people, but um, you know, we want we want the texture to be a nice smooth transition. And so if you turn the shell back on, you can see that it would be otherwise, but the color didn't come across. Well, the problem with this is the centaur shell, a shell in, in DAZ is just a representative mesh. It has no vertices, basically. It, it either has zero or one, something like that. But it's more like just an object that uh, has paint on it. So... I have not found a way to get that to go into Blender nicely, or even to be able to use the materials on the shell and apply them to the mesh. So when I export this to Blender, this is what you're gonna get. You know, it still mostly looks nice, but that transition between the human and the horse parts are not gonna have uh, that bit of the shell. And I'm still looking for a way to apply the shell to the body, if you will, so that, um, this transition part becomes part of the torso, if you will. But 
if I if I try to do it, and I can I can show you here while we're talking, but if I try to do it right now, I can go to the surfaces menu, click on the shell, come down to the torso. Uh, if I if I just copy that the shell surface and then come up here to the Genesis 8 female model, which is the human part. If I bring the, let's see, we're in surfaces. If I bring that down to the torso and paste it, so I've copied it from the shell, the centaur shell, and pasted it onto the Genesis 8 female, you get the, the transition is now attached. So if I turn the shell off, the transition's still there, but it's not the right color and it has eliminated the, the texture of the human skin from the torso object. So I haven't found a way to combine them yet so that the, the fur just goes on top of the skin. Um, so this is as good as we can get right now with my knowledge. If, if again, if somebody knows, please let us all know in the comments because you know, once I, once I figured out the mesh issues, this just made, um, these steps a lot easier, but that transition is not ideal. So we're going to have to do some custom painting either here or in blender, which is fine, but you know, going to all this extra work and then still having, uh, something that looks goofy like that is not, is not ideal. So if you know how to fix it, let us know. But for now, this is this is what we're going to end up with when we export to Blender. Um, yeah, so a couple last notes. N the next video, I'll show you how to use the scripts for Diffeomorphic, which is an add-on um, to export this to Blender and how to get it into Blender properly. So we'll do that in the next video. But at this point, you can still... Uh, let's let's select the Genesis 8 female and go to the uh, parameters menu and then go to I believe just select the whole thing or general works but um, you can still you can play around with like all of these different sliders and you can modify the mesh still so now that we have figured out the the difference between uh, let's see the difference between exporting with all those extra meshes and having them cleaned up before we export none of these sliders are going to break anything so when you export them to blender they're going to look like they do in daz and that's really nice so you're not going to have to clean up the mesh itself once we get to blender we'll just combine everything but uh yeah for now I would I would leave your character in a nice riggable pose like this and you know if you're going to rig it on your own if you don't have a meta rig set up then um something like this is going to be just fine especially like with the tail sticking straight out that's that's what you're going to want so um yeah I think this is this is about where we'll stop for this first part but um, your mesh should be clean, and we're ready to export this whole thing to Blender. So watch for part two soon, and we will get to that hopefully this week as well. Thank you so much for watching.